Hi there. Today I want to discuss about a concept called isomerism, which is a very popular concept in IGCSE organic chemistry. This is from topic 14. So basically this is happens to be a phenomena in which some organic compounds could be represented in more than one form. But keep in mind that the, they will have the same molecular formula. So that's the challenge that you have. We'll give you a molecular formula and you will have to draw two or more different structural arrangements of that particular compound. And of course, when you have different structures, you end up having different names. So it is a good opportunity for you to also revise your IUPAC rules and regulations. So let's have a look. I'll start you off with a simple definition, which I've already mentioned here. So let's, let's have a look at the first case. If I give you a molecular formula C4H10. Now keep in mind, you are not allowed to change the composition of what I have given you. It means you only have to work with four carbon atoms and 10 hydrogen atoms. And you have to arrange them in two different ways, such that you end up having two different names as well. Now, the, the first option, probably what you could think, is to arrange the four carbon in a straight carbon chain. Now, you must also keep in mind how how do we come to know the number of hydrogen which is attached on every carbon now remember carbon is in group four it means it has four electrons in the outer shell it needs to form four bonds so the number of h depends on that on this particular carbon number one already has made one bond so it needs three more and that's how we put the three hydrogen there this carbon number two has two bonds already so it needs two more so that's the two hydrogen there in carbon number three, it has two bonds, so it needs two more hydrogens. Carbon number four has one bond and it needs three more. Now, how do we name it? Well, we have four carbon. So if it's a four carbon parent chain, we call this parent chain. This is the, um, the, the so-called longest carbon chain. And because it has four carbon, so we call the parent or the elk, as we say, is butte. Now, because I see all single bonds everywhere, I'm going to end this with ain, so that's butane for you. Now, if if I have to, if I have to draw my second isomer, the options which I could use is let's say let's say I, I want to try um, to put three carbon this way, and let's say I put my fourth carbon here. But the, the problem is when when you number the carbon one, two, three you have to put the fourth number here because it's still part of your parent chain. Which basically means this and this is the same thing. So this couldn't be your isomer. And uh, if, if you look at the option of three carbons and you want to put the carbon this way, and you'll find that it's, it's the same situation again. I mean, uh, if you want to number the carbon, you could number from here, or you have to number from here. It, it, it still ends up having four carbons, which means it still becomes butane. You cannot consider this as a methyl group. That's not possible because it becomes part of the parent chain. That's why a second alternative for you could be, you could put three carbon this way and put the fourth carbon here, because we understand we can't put it on this one. We can't put it on this one. So we can't. We can put our fourth carbon here. And if you count the number of hydrogen for each one, then this carbon has one bond, so it needs three more. This is carbon number one, carbon two, carbon three. Now this carbon has one, two, three. It only needs one more H. <clears throat> this is carbon number three. It has one bond. It needs three more. This carbon here, it has one bond, and it needs three more. Now what has happened is that's your the so-called parent chain and that's the functional group methyl and it's at position number two which means when you name this compound you're going to name this as two methyl two because of that this position is two methyl because of this that's methyl group and you have three carbon in your parent chain so that's prop and since you see all single bonds everywhere that's ain so that's two methyl propane now two methyl propane 
is definitely an isomer of uh, your butane that you drew earlier on. This was butane. So that's your first isomer, butane. And if you look at butane, it has four carbon and ten halogens. And and if you look at uh, if you look at your two methyl propane, it also has four carbon and ten halogens. So that's basically how you figure out. If you look here, it has four carbon and ten halogens. So that's why two methyl propane and butane are isomers of each other. Now let's have a look at another example. Why don't, why don't you try? I'll give you a question and let's say, why don't you pause the video for a minute and why don't you try to make two different structures of C3H7Cl and then try to match with my answers. Well, assuming that you have tried, um, this could be one option. First of all, sometimes students get confused as to how they would ask, how do I know there's a single bond or a double bond between the carbon atoms? And the trick is, if you multiply 3 by 2, that 3 times 2 is 6, and that number is more than 6, it means there cannot be a double bond inside. So that's how you figure out it has to be 3 carbons with single bond. Now, since you're going to have chlorine, which is your functional group, so that probably should give you an idea. You can probably put chlorine at different positions to get your, your isomers. So for my first isomer, I can I can put the chlorine let's say at first position and for for my second isomer I can again put three carbons this way and I can decide to put the chlorine at the second position now let's put the number of hydrogens this is carbon one two three Now this carbon one has two bonds already so it needs two more hydrogens this carbon number two has two bonds so it needs two hydrogen this carbon has only one bond, so it needs three hydrogens. Now let's try to name this. This is the parent chain. It consists of three carbon there. This becomes your functional group at position number one. So that's why this is going to be called as one chloropropane. You could also call this as chloropropane. It's understood it's on position one. But if you look at this one, this needs three hydrogen one two three so it needs only one hydrogen and this needs three this is one two three so, that, so now the name of this compound becomes two chlorotropane now notice carefully both the compounds one two three three carbons two four seven seven hydrogens and one chlorine so both contain the same molecular formula but they are two different structures with two different names. That's basically what isomerism is. So I, I'll give you some questions for you to work on. Uh, and uh, for example, have a look at this one. C4H8. Why don't you try to make some isomers yourself and try to name them and see how it goes. You should be able to get easily about three isomers and maybe a bit more as well. The first isomer, now first of all you should always check 4 times 2 is 8, which means it's following the general formula CNH2N, which belongs to a family called alkenes. Now basically what happens here is that these alkenes, they have some kind of one double bond between carbon and carbon, it could be anywhere, and that's basically the hint for you to work with. So you could think of 4 carbons in a straight chain. And you could decide to put the double bond here. The moment you do that, you get an idea of maybe I can put my four carbons this way and put the double bond here. So I, I clearly got my two isomers. So let, let's put my hydrogen. That's one, two, three, four. So this carbon needs only two more hydrogens. This carbon, one, two, three, it only has three bonds. So it just needs one more. This carbon needs two hydrogens. And this one needs three. So if we count all the hydrogen, it's equal to eight. Now I have four carbon there, so I'm going to call this but But I see there's a double bond between one and two, so I can say but one in, or I can simply say butene. I I don't have to say the position. It's understood. It's it's on one. But when I look at this one, carbon one, two, 
three, four. This is CH3. This one needs one edge, one edge, and three hydrogens. Now I see the double bond is between two and three. So this compound is going to get the name but two. Now look at the names. There are two different names, two different structures, and both contain the same molecular formula. There is one more isomer you can think of. Now, if I shift the double bond to this position, I can't get an isomer. So, which means I can think of having a smaller chain of three carbons. I can put the double bond here or here. My fourth carbon, remember, I can't put it here and here. So, I need the fourth carbon here. So, this is carbon one, two, three. So this one needs two hydrogen. This carbon to number two has one, two, three, four. It already has four bonds, so it does not need any hydrogen. Carbon number three needs three hydrogens, and this needs three hydrogens. So that becomes the parent chain. That's the functional group. It's at position number two, so it's going to be called as two methyl. And because I have three carbon there, so I'm going to call this as prop. And since there's a double bond, in that's two methyl protein. So all three are isomers of C4H8. So that's basically what simple isomerism at the IGCC level. You could think of shifting the position of double bond. You could think of shifting the position of any other functional group. You could think of reducing the parent chain by one carbon. But don't forget, don't put that carbon as methyl group in the first and the last of the chain. Try to put that in somewhere in the middle. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you like that please don't forget to like and subscribe it and share it with your friends and I hope to make more videos for the organic chemistry soon. See you. Ciao.